بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين. Welcome to another episode of Office Hours. Um, this is a kind of a special episode. Uh, it's going to be one of a series dealing with related questions. The first question we want to look at is, is Karbala mentioned in the Bible? And that's a very peculiar question. I think many people will find it strange, but there is some little backstory here. I first um, came across a question of this nature a long time ago. When I was a graduate student at Princeton University, I was reading some uh, journals in, um, actually, back in those days, the Persian and Hebrew and Turkish collection was still in Jones Hall, hadn't been moved to Firestone Library, and the so-called SY collection. They've probably thrown it down on the sea level by now in the Firestone Library. But at any rate, I was reading this journal, and it was an Arabic journal. I really don't remember what the name of it was, but it had this very weird a title which caught my attention. And it was in Arabic, but the title uh, basically of the article was uh, The Twelve Imams in the Bible. <clears throat> and I thought, what a bizarre thing. And I read the paper or the article, whatever it was, and uh, found that it wasn't very profound. And then I really didn't think about it ever again for years and years and years. And then uh, with um, the coming of the internet and uh, the YouTube and all of this, it seems there's a lot of videos out there where people somehow think, Muslims, Shia Muslims in particular, somehow think that Karbala and Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the 12 Imams alayhi salam are somehow mentioned in the Bible. So that's why I thought, let me look into this and see exactly what is going on. Part of the reason for that is that, and we're not going to go into this in any detail here, just by way of mention, that the Quran does state that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is mentioned in, was prophesized or mentioned in some way or another in the Jewish and Christian scriptures. And we're not going to go into that. Maybe we'll make another video about that or another series of videos at another time. So if you actually go on the internet and just, you know, use any search engine and do a search and type in, for example, Karbala in the Bible, you come up with all sorts of videos. It's really surprising. And if you actually do a search, for example, what, the first search I actually did was Ahlul Bayt in the Bible. And um, I came across this video, which is a convenient one to reference because it has all of these ideas in 11 or, what is it, about 12 minutes. It's called Shia Islam in the Holy Bible. And uh, I'm really not sure who is behind it, but if you watch the video, it comes up as someone named Abdul, well, someone going by the name of Abdul Zahra, Roman numeral one, and then underneath in Arabic it says Asad Lubnan. And the video has been shared by someone called Shia for life. So I don't know who this person is. But he's conveniently got all of these kind of um, ideas, which I will show most of them are just misconceptions about um, things in the Bible. Um, so let's look at the first one, uh, basically, which is, is Karbala mentioned in the Bible or not? Well, it depends on what you mean by Karbala. Karbala is both the name of a place as well as a reference to an event which took place at, at, at a location that goes by the name of Karbala as well. So you have to distinguish between just the location as such and the event that took place there. And really the two have become synonymous. So the question really is, uh, is Karbala in either of those meanings, whether as a place name or as an actual event mentioned in the Bible or not? And again, if you look into this on the web, you have people making all sorts of strange claims. So... Um, there is the idea that the battle which took place at Karbala, in which Imam Hussein alayhi salam was involved in, was somehow prophesized in the Bible. Now, this is also something which is very imprecise. People constantly talk about the Bible. I think I may have mentioned this in one of my earlier, very early videos um, on Jay Smith and his whole attack on the Quran and so forth. So I talked about the so-called the Bible. When you attach the definite article, it's very confusing because the Christians have a different understanding of what is the Bible. And then there's different Christian groups who have a different understanding of what is meant by the term the Bible. And the Jews have a very different understanding of what is meant by the Bible. So without going into all of that in too much detail, the reference in question, which people claim is a prophecy of the Battle of Karbala, is in the, the Hebrew Bible in the book of Jeremiah in chapter 46. 
And you can just look that up on the web. I don't really want to um, uh, discuss the whole thing, but there is a reference to some sort of um, battle and swords and blood and sacrifice and so on. And uh, Shia Muslims will, certain Shia Muslims will just jump to the conclusion that this is a prophecy of uh, the Battle of Karbala because the apparently the, the Euphrates uh, River is mentioned. So it's actually in Jeremiah chapter 46, um, verse 10. I am using the Jewish publication Society, yeah, Jewish publication Society, Tanakh, Holy Scriptures. But you can refer to any <clears throat> translation of the um, Hebrew Scriptures, uh, what the Christians would call the Old Testament, what the Jews would not call the Old Testament, um, and it's just 4610. Otherwise, if you're using this edition, it's page 863. Verse 10 says, But that day shall be for the Lord God of hosts a day when he exacts retribution from his foes. The sword shall de devour, it shall be sated and drunk with their blood, for the Lord God of hosts is preparing a sacrifice in the northland by the river Euphrates. So they jump to this conclusion that uh, this battle and this blood sacrifice and so forth, because it mentions the Euphrates, it must be Karbala, because Karbala is on the bank of the Euphrates. Well, uh, if you actually read the whole chapter, you'll realize that it's not a reference to this at all. It's a reference to um, the Battle of um, Kar Karchemish, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, there's Google and all of this, but, you know, I refer to books. So you can refer directly to the Encyclopedia Judaica, and then you will find that uh, uh, Karchemish is an ancient city in northern Syria, on the east bank of the Euphrates, known today as Jerablus. It's about 62 miles northeast of Aleppo. In other words, very far away from Karbala. Oh my God! There are other references, however, that could possibly refer to Karbala as the location, not as the event. Um, and the problem here is that I don't know of any pre-Islamic reference to the place known today as Karbala. Uh, if you refer to the Encyclopedia of uh, Islam, all right, there's three versions of the Encyclopedia of Islam. There's the first Encyclopedia of Islam, then there's the second edition, which confusingly is known as the new Encyclopedia of Islam, and then there's Encyclopedia of Islam number three, which is in progress. So I'm, I'm talking about the middle one, what, what Orientalists usually re refer to as EI2, or Encyclopedia of Islam, the second one, and this would be in volume four. Uh, so in the entry on Karbala, of course, it tells us it's a place in Iraq, a 60 miles south-southwest of Baghdad. Um, Imam Hussein a.s. was martyred there, but... It goes on to say that, you know, the name Karbala probably comes from the Aramaic Karbala, which is mentioned in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 3, verse 21. You should know that that portion of the Hebrew Bible is actually the book of Daniel. There are significant portions in Aramaic. And then it also gives an etymology from the Assyrian Karbalatu, a kind of headdress. And then it goes on to say that it is not mentioned in the pre-Islamic period. So... Yeah, you know, wh whatever the word may mean in Syriac or, or um, ancient Akkadian, I really don't even see the relevance of that and how in the world that could be derived therefrom. They never really give a justification. And uh, you can actually check on that. I mean, I, I checked up. I have various dictionaries. You will find in a concise dictionary of Akkadian under the entry Karbalatu, and you can look up things in the relevant Aramaic dictionaries, and you'll find it has to do with winding or, or a kind of conical cap. Okay, so what? That doesn't help us. Uh, but the point uh, to make really from the Encyclopedia of Islam is that it's not known in pre-Islamic times uh, as a place. But nevertheless, a lot of Shia Muslims who are looking for some sort of... Um, I don't know why they feel they need some kind of validation to find reference in, in a previous scripture. And again, maybe the motivation is because of the idea that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is somehow... Um, mentioned in the Jewish and Christian scriptures, so maybe they feel they should find some reference to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Karbala and the Imams and so on and so forth as well. Now, so there is also this idea that in the book of Ezekiel, there is a mention of a place. Um, it's pretty confusing in English. If you if you find it, it's and in the English translations of the Bible, it's often given as S C H E B A R. So, Chebar, Chebar, uh, but in Hebrew, it really should be pronounced, uh, if I'm doing it right, Kivar. 
uh, because there's no dagesh on the beth. In other words, there's no dot inside the second letter, letter ba, so it becomes a v. And um, there's a very useful <coughs> source here called the Biblische, Biblische Real Wörterbuch. It's in German. It's a very old copy here. And if you look in there, it says Kebar ein Fluss im Kalesche Reiche, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, basically it means that it's a river in um, Chaldea. And in the, uh, another early reference work is the Cyclopedia of Biblical Literature, which basically just reproduces what's there in the German. It says, A river of Mesopotamia upon the banks of which King Nebuchadnezzar planted a colony of Jews, among whom was the prophet Ezekiel. And then it goes on to say, This is without doubt the same river that was known among the Greeks as the Chaboras. It says exactly the same in the German here. But if you go to more recent scholarship, you will find that the Kevar... And even in the Jude Encyclopedia Judaic, it's C-H-E-B-A-R, but it gives the Hebrew, so it should be Kevar. And in um, square brackets, it says Nehar. So, you know, Nehar Kevar is how we say it. You know, you would say it in Arabic, I suppose. So it's actually a canal in Mesopotamia. And in Akkadian, it would be Nar Kabaru or Kab Kabari. Either one is possible meaning very thick and wide great canal. It says here that it's perhaps identical with the Purat Nippur, the Euphrates Canal of Nippur, which is mentioned apparently in the book of Genesis, uh, G G Gen R, maybe that's Genesis Rabbah, 16.3. On the banks of this canal near the village of Tel Abib, that's not the modern Tel Aviv, where a colony of Ezekiel's fellow exiles lived. So if you actually uh, look into it, it basically... There is uh, something called the Shatta Nil in present-day Iraq. And if you look into all of this, um, there, is, there, there may have been some sort of a canal at the time. And it is close to Karbala, but it's closer to present-day uh, Al-Hilla. It would have been near the ancient um, city of Nippur, which would not have been far from Babylon as well. These things are all pretty close. If you go on Google Maps and you type those locations in, you can look at the latitudes and longitudes. I've actually never been there. But if you study these these kind of um, maps, you can figure that out so that it's a reference possibly to some sort of place. And the in the book of Ezekiel, there's several mentions. It's always in the form River of Kevar or Chebar, Kebar, Chebar, however you want to say. But in Hebrew, it would be Kevar. And I think there's five, six, seven, maybe uh, maybe up to um, even up to maybe eight references in the book of Ezekiel. So Ezekiel is supposed to have had some visions there. So whether or not that is actually the same place as Karbala or it's near, it's possible, but there's no real way to really know for sure. But if we go by what's in the Encyclopedia Judaica, probably not. I don't know that it achieves anything or proves anything if, in fact, it was the case. But there is an intriguing kind of reference that I came across very recently. There is something at Princeton University. Um, I think it goes, it's, it's called the Princeton, yeah, the Princeton Geniza Lab. So there has been a lot of research on Geniza documents that going on at Princeton and also another location in the UK, Cambridge University, for quite a long time. This was a cache of very, very important documents that was found in Cairo's Geniza, or kind of storage room of the Cairo uh, Jewish synagogue, Jewish um, community synagogue there, where they had been storing up documents. It's very similar to, in, 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 as we have in Islamic culture, people don't like to dispose of things that have writing on them because there may be some sacred writing there. And so they would just store them somewhere. And so a lot of documents came out there. And there was a recent tweet from the Princeton Geniza Lab of a document which has no further identification. I tried to find more about this. It's called MS, usually stands for manuscript. H-E-B would be Hebrew, D3356. Have no idea. It's some sort of a um, <clears throat> glossary, an Arabic glossary of the Bible. The tweet reads, this is curious, an Arabic glossary of the Bible that identifies the Kevar, Kebar, it has it with a B here, river, the location of Ezekiel's vision of the divine chariot as Karbala, exclamation point between parentheses, better known as the site of the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. So I thought that was quite different, uh, quite uh, unusual. And um, there is a picture of it there on the tweet. You can actually go to their page and see it. I'll put it up on the screen. And indeed on the right, if you look in the image, one, two, three, third line down, it says Kivar on the right. And then right next to it in Hebrew, you can clearly read Karbala. So who knows? <laughs> Maybe um, the vision of Ezekiel did take place at or near Karbala. Maybe it didn't. This um, Geniza document is certainly quite intriguing.
but I don't have any further information on that. So I will simply answer and conclude by saying that no, Karbala, to the best of my knowledge, is not mentioned in the Hebrew Scriptures. Thank you for watching.